Okay. Is it audible? Am I hearable? Or hearable? It's Sunday. It's sunny outside. What are we doing inside? We shouldn't do that. So um, I'm not sure if you saw the presentation yesterday I did on the sculpture we made. Um, it was a bag filled with vaginas and penises. It was 16 plus, which I thought was a little bit confusing because it was so far away and it was all so sculptural <laughs> that you couldn't really tell what it was. But the idea was that it had to do with equal rights. And um, when Antonina called me and said, look, I'd like you to come over for the presentation this year for the festival, she, um, yeah, she got me thinking. And the thing that struck me in Poland last time, I think last year, there was this... Uh, news flash that we got in Europe where gay people could not walk through a street because they had a big sign in the street that said you can't go in. I thought that was really fucked up. So I started thinking like what do I do in my profession? Uh, I have a program that I run with refugees. I try to give them equal rights. Um, but there are other programs as well. There are other places in the world that do this. So I thought it would be nice today, on the Sunday, to do like a, a happy top 20 of other artists and other organizations in the world that are trying to make, to make it better for other people, even though they're good and that they're fine and that they're white and they get everything they want and they're straight. They work towards a better life where we can all be more equal. So this is my top 20. Um, there are more, there are absolutely more, but I thought it would be really nice to introduce you guys to these ones. So number one, see if we get it right, it's me, of course, thank you. So um, the only, uh, no, sorry, number 20, I'm not, we're going from top to bottom. Uh, yes, honorable mention, exactly, yeah. I have to say a little bit about myself and then I'll talk about other people as well. Um, I started a program for refugees, for young immigrants coming into the country of Belgium. Uh, they wouldn't they had difficulty learning the language, they had difficulty communicating as well. And so we set up this program, they come in once a week and they learn how to work with glass. So we do fusing techniques, we do a little bit of glass blowing, very basic stuff. And when they make something, I try to help them to explain what they're making in, uh, in Dutch. So that's the national language. What we do is we keep working with them. So the program lasted for about half a year and when they come in, you know, they're scared. There's these young teenagers. They don't really know what to do. There's this person standing there in swimming trunks telling them to talk about themselves and they've been through hell. Fuck no. They don't want to do that. So, you know, it takes a while. And once they get into it, they, they start to really, you know, grow. Um, I think that's good. That's something I'm trying to do more and more in my practice. I think we're confronted with a few large issues. I think one of them in the coming 30 years will be climate refugees. I think the other one will be sustainability. Um, so I'm trying to work on those two things within my own practice. And that's what we do. We work with different people. We work with young kids. If you look in the corner there or in the middle, that was my first glory hall I ever built on a shopping trolley. I'm still very proud of that actually. So we use that one every now and then for the, the kids program. Right, so that's enough about me. Um, somebody else from Poland, from this academy actually, Marta. She once told me a story that within her family, within her region, sexuality was an issue that you couldn't discuss. So she started making work about that. I think that's something that's, um, that's inspirational. And if you want to see more about what she does, at the bottom is her Instagram hashtag. I've put the Instagram things on everything. Click through it, see what she's doing. It's, uh, she's just starting out. And I think that's very special for a young woman that was raised in a society that can't talk about sexuality, starts making these works. And she's making them in Ghent. She made them here yesterday. She was helping John as well. So she's traveling around the world and she's trying to put forward the thoughts that she has on being open and able to talk about sexuality. So that's really nice. And I hope she really progresses in the years. Another artist that I really love, uh, Sylvia Levinson, born in Buenos Aires. And she went to Madrid in the 90s. 
her story is special as well. She was actually working as an artist in Buenos Aires, and uh, she was against the dictatorship that was happening at that time. And she and her family actually had to flee to Madrid to uh, get rid of that political situation. But she kept making work. She's still making work. I think she's one of the most interesting artists that I've seen doing fusing and glasswork um, up to now. It's inspirational, and she has a rough story uh, that she can still present that in glass. It's very special. One of those people to watch out for, although she's actually a lot older. She's progressed quite far up to now. So Berlin Glass um, is run by uh, Nadani Idris, and um, she set up a program for Iranian refugees. She works with an Islam museum and uh, Ir Iraqi museum, sorry if I'm saying it correctly. So her practice is, well, especially this, is based on workshops that they do with young refugees. And they do fusing workshops, especially in Berlin Glass itself. And they also do these workshops where they go out it's a bit of a weird picture, but they have a mobile setup where they go into different communities of Berlin and they try and get kids, young kids that don't have a chance, they give them the opportunity to work with class. So in her way, she's also trying to even out the odds, which is cool. Tracy Kirchman, um, yeah, Tracy has a degree in psychology. Um, and the thing that I really liked about her, she works from Chicago. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with Chicago. It's a, it's a very big city in America. Um, there's somebody else that's going to be in the presentation as well. You know, the place is filled with violence. And sometimes these kids that are working and living there, they just don't, they don't get the chances that, that we get in the rich European countries like Belgium and Holland. And Tracy is one of those people that sets up programs to work with these young kids and give them opportunity to move forward. And especially working with the youngsters, I think if you started out early and you move forward, especially with young kids, then you know the later generations will think differently because they will be those later generations. So one of the projects that she also has is, um, uh, this is also a youth program. She works in a high school now. Um, it's like, for me, that's odd. I could not imagine going to high school and having a, a glass studio right next to the high school or in the high school. Uh, she's doing a lot with recycling as well at the moment, actually. So she's kind of touching on those two levels. Um, yeah, she says, I, I spoke to her a few months ago. We tried to do an interview. It's really difficult to get the funding going and to also make sure that the high schools understand that working with your hands is a way to work through some of the issues that you have. Um, she's just one of those people that bowlers on. So it's really nice that she's doing that. Getting Gala Glass is in Kenya. And um, Anselm has been running Getting Gala Glass for, I'm sorry, for about, I think, 35 years now. I think he's one of the pioneers in waste glass. Um, the reason I put him in it, in this show, um, he employs about 35 people, and he gives them chances to learn together. He brings in other artists to teach them. And the amazing thing that he does is, I don't think he realizes it, because I told him about it at some point. I'm like, you feed an entire town <laughs> with what you do. And you give them the opportunity to learn and to grow. And that's not an easy thing to do in Africa. You know? So one of those people that just goes out there to a third world country, and whether he's thinking about making it equal or not, I don't think that makes a difference. But he is trying to help these people move forward in their occupation. And he's trying to give them a sustainable lifestyle. And it's working. So chops to them. Yeah, I had to put Nancy in. Um, she works in Seattle. Um, she's one of those artists that uh, worked with Lino, for instance. Uh, she has her own studio now, as far as I know. Um, her work is very technical, it's process driven. She's gay, she's lesbian. But the thing that I like about it 
is that I don't know her personally, but I've never seen that she openly makes work or talks about her sexuality. She just makes it, as far as I can tell. And she doesn't worry about that anymore. She thinks, or at least I don't know, my perception of it is that she's just a person. She's doing whatever she does, and it doesn't matter anymore. Um, I find that inspiring to get to that point where you're like, no, I'm not going to talk about this because I believe the way forward is to just move forward regardless of those situations. And that's what I like about her and that's why I think that she's inspirational as an artist just because she does it, period. Elmira Aulosani, which is really nice. Um, yeah, I, have to <laughs> I only met her like a few... Uh, weeks ago during a lecture. She's uh, Iranian, uh, Iranian Portuguese, and she's living in uh, Lisbon at the moment. And she got a degree in uh, Iran. And she has a, when you go onto her internet site, she has a very interesting starter line. Life is a mirror and will reflect black to the thinker what he thinks of it. To, to quote from Ernest Holmes. Um, yeah. I thought, you know, to... <laughs> in her position, trying to, to move forward as a flame worker and a glass artist with the baggage that she has, uh, to also put it in a perspective where she's not pushing too hard into the situations that she's been through, but she is just trying to make art to present her position. It's a... Uh, you have to look at a site to understand how it works. Um, I would really recommend uh, doing that. She's trying to figure out how, this is her words, how human networks and identities are formed and what the underlying structure is. I think it's quite theoretical. So, but I thought I'd put it in there and if you guys want to check it out then you should absolutely see it because it's, it's really nice work. So Jeremy Dias is not a glass artist at all. <laughs> he, um, he set up a center for gender and sexual diversity in Canada. Um, but he was invited into GAS, the Glass Art Society, to do a talk on equity and gender equality. Um, he was an inspirational person. He had a bit of a rough life. He started off in Canada, uh, gay. And at the high school, he wanted to set up a club for, um, you know, just for gender equality to talk about that. So he got <laughs> the, the shit kicked out of him, and the school wouldn't do anything about it that he, was, uh, that he was with at the time. So he took the school to court, he sued the school, and he got $5,000 from the school as a, as a payback. And what he did with that is he set up a scholarship program in Canada, and now it's grown. They engage 75,000 young people a year to help them to move through talking about gender equality. So to have him get into the gas thing, to the glass uh, art society, and to talk a little bit from his perspective, not about glass, I thought that was something that was quite inspirational because as an artist, um, I find it's always nice to look outside the boundaries as well and have somebody come in and give you a different perspective so you can look at your own work in a different way again. So Jeremy doesn't have an Instagram account. <laughs> well, he kind of does, but it's just dogs and cats, so I don't think you should do that. But if you look it up on the internet, he has some very interesting lectures that he did on YouTube as well. Right, James LeBold, yeah. Um, yeah, what to say about James. <laughs> um, yeah, he's working in Pennsylvania at the moment. Um, his works relate to patriotism, national identity, mythology. Uh, the piece that you're looking at here, it's called uh, Divisive Ruling. Um, works within glass, blown glass, mixed media, paints on it as well. Um, again, I would suggest looking him up, uh, seeing what other kind of works he makes, maybe as an academy trying to get him here because his work is really inspirational. It's, yeah, it's got that thing where you can relate to it. I mean, this piece, awesome. It's Sleep of Reason, it's called. So if you can, check out his work, see what it's about. Yeah. 
So, one of my two favorite people. <laughs> yeah, I, I, can, uh, I hope that most of you know them, the Delatories. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going to actually find something because I, there was something interesting about that. Yeah. So, um, I always thought they, that their work was only related to Mexican um, tradition, but I actually found out this morning that it's also pre Columbian work that they connect with as well. And they've been working together for 30 years. They started their occupation, sorry, I'll stick it in my ear, in the 1990s. And um, yeah, I had the luxury of working with them in Ghent Glass for a little while. When we talk about like inclusion and um, getting everybody to accept each other, these guys have an amazingly special way of doing that on the floor in the hot shop. Um, it inspired me. When you get in there and you work with them, no matter what your level, they make you feel at home. And they start making things, and you feel like it's all working. <laughs> and they just hang around, and they do it, and they, it just gets done. And they have that way of doing that, which, I don't know, it's very difficult to describe. If you see them work, and if you see, or if you get the chance to work with them as well, then you'll understand it. But their work itself, I think, for me, it speaks to a larger audience that says, you know, uh, this traditional work that they're making, um, they blow it up, they add so much meaning, they add so many layers to it. And I think it's really nice as, you know, for them, as Mexicans, to be able to put themselves out there and to be able to express their culture in the way that they do. Yeah. That's inspiring the way that they actually make that. I believe this was one of the pieces that was at the SIG gallery a few years ago. Right, um, talking about organizations that really pull together and try to help young kids work. Glassroots from Newark, New Jersey. Um, they've been in it now for 20 years and um, I think one of the people, yeah, it's just a group of people that the way they've set up their corporation, um, it's part commercial, it's part um, non-commercial. And yeah, check it out. It's um, absolutely worthwhile. Right, heading on to number eight, the Hilltop Artists in Seattle. Again, this is one of those groups. Um, I think that they're, that they're one of the best organizations that work to educate young people and um, especially at-risk youth to get them into glass. You know, Seattle is kind of the mecca for glass work in the world. Um, and for an organization like this to work at the Tacoma Glass Museum with them is, you know, it's inspiring. You get kids to stand in this huge auditorium and just go wild. That's, uh, I wish I was that little bugger standing there actually, but it's just the way it is, yeah. So as far as uh, feminism goes, <laughs> we all, we have to add Deborah. <laughs> yes, Netflix. But I think she was one of the people that was, uh, I think, you know, she's pivotal in the way that she expands on, on, on just being able to talk about the things she finds important and in glass. You know, she can reach out to a huge community. And doing that through Netflix, I think it pulled it past the idea that where it's just a glass community working within those connections. It pushed it into the world and it showed that with glass, you can actually make work that inspires these equal rights. And that's awesome. I mean, this is the one in Netflix, the, the uterus for males. I was like, yeah, of course, that's the way it should be. You know, why the fuck didn't we? <laughs> so yeah, she's high up on the list. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, John, of course, as well. I mean, he's been doing this for years, um, of course. You know, as an artist, the way he politically engages work, he makes things that hurt when you look at them, but there's a beauty in it, and there's a sophistication in it, and there's an elegance in it that, yeah, absolutely inspiring. 
He's doing a lecture in a little bit, so stay over for that. Yeah. He's working now on an exhibition, I believe it's just finished, but it is still online, Not Grandma's Glass. It's held through Habitat Galleries. Inspiring group of artists that have been selected by Aaron Shea to kind of highlight the things that are influential in glass at the moment. That's really cool that he's in there. He deserves it. This is my favorite one, though. Um, the Firebird. Pearl Dick, I don't know if you guys know it, there was a few years ago, there was a documentary, um, I think it popped out on YouTube, went viral. Uh, she has a program and it's called Fire, and they work with uh, young adults that have been exposed to violence. I cried when I saw it the first time. I mean, these kids, they <laughs> literally had nothing traumatized, and Pearl stepped in also with Tracy, actually, was one of the founders. And they started working with them. And they expanded their program now to a point where it's just it's functioning. And they've added a second program. Uh, I think it started last year. And it's called VET. And what they do is they work with war veterans. So as a community-based arts, glass arts um, studio, I don't know any other one in the world that are doing work which is that pivotal. It's amazing. You just, you guys, you should absolutely check it out and see what they're doing. It's awesome. And then, of course, the Glass Art Society. We have to call them in every now and then. Uh, this is the old board. I'm a member of the new board, by the way. Anyway, um, yeah, they are doing a lot of work because, you know, now with the Pride Month going on, they're highlighting artists especially just to expand the knowledge. Uh, in the last few years that I've been active within the Glass Art Society, I've seen that they're really trying to push forward going into Europe a lot more in my perception than they used to. Um, yeah, if you need something, if you want something, if you want to do something, call for it, go for it. I mean, it's a fantastic way to meet people. Uh, you just get sucked into this big knowledge pool. So. Absolutely. For anybody here that wants to do something, do a proposal. Right. Number three, Jamie Guerrero. Yeah. Um, what to say about Jamie? Um, he's working from Los Angeles. Uh, he does a lot of urban and Latino culture related work. Um, I'm going to pop on to the next slide immediately because this was one of the ones that really hit me. Um, this is called Broken Dreams immigrant-related work. Yeah, again, watch the YouTube movies of this guy working. He, used, he predominantly uses clear glass and just an amazing glass sculptor. And what he does as well, I mean, it's not just the sculptures that he makes, but in South Central Los Angeles, he's also got a glass blowing program that he set up to work with at-risk youth as well. So it's not just making the artwork, which is, I find, you know, it's very much in your face. Um, but it's also working at the same time with kids to help them move forward. So he's really high up on the list. Well, we're almost done, so... Do you guys know what number two is going to be? I don't think so. No. Yeah. Joseph Cavalieri. Um, yeah, you know, there's a lot of stained glass in um, that you guys are doing here as well. And, you know, Joseph has a very interesting turn in that he tries to use traditional techniques and modern culture and mix them together. Uh, he's doing a few lectures at the moment now in the Pride Month as well through gas. So if you feel like you want to hear his thoughts, then I would suggest that you pop into that because I don't think I can explain it as well as he does. But yeah, he's been in it for a long time, New York based. Um, I think he's really pushing things forward on the stained glass level. So. I would definitely suggest going in there. Yeah. And last but not least, um, I think this is the guy, or this is the studio that I really, really like, Public Glass. Um, let me just find the last one on that. Yeah. It's, uh, it's based in San Francisco. Um, yeah, I'm going to pop over to the last one immediately. Nate Watson. I'm not sure if you guys remember uh, the Black Lives Matter thing broke out two years ago. 
Um, within the Gloss community, I think Nate was one of the first people. <laughs> you know, what happened it was kind of weird. The Black Lives Matter, of course they do. And then suddenly, all these organizations stood up and said, yes, they do. And they started digging up their archives. And it was like, let's bring in all the pictures of the black people. Let's take all the African Americans and make them look good and blah, blah, blah. And let's get some artists in that are black and let's make Black Lives Matter. And Nate said, uh, you know, he stood up and he said, like, what the fuck is this? This really does, it doesn't make sense at all. Why are you saying it now? Why haven't we been saying this so much longer? Why is it an issue now? We should move forward from this point and we should really start looking at ways to intrinsically change the way we look at these things. And he stepped up, uh, but he stepped up in a way that I liked it. He didn't step up and say, no, this is wrong. He said, no, wait, you're looking at it in a strange way, and we should start revolving around that, and we shouldn't make it about this thing this year. It shouldn't be about that at all. It should be about a process which is a lot longer and a lot more extensive, and at the end of the day, I think a lot more sustainable. So, yeah, I hope you guys have found some interesting points and some interesting people. Look them up, you know, try and make a connection. Um, yeah, that was what it was all about today. It was about glass connections. Thank you. <laughs>